and I'm me. I'm just for sure. Like There we go. I'd like to call the Public Works Committee to order. Uh, please take the attendance. Alderman Ames? Here. Alderman Catalano? Here. Alderman Curiali? Here. Alderman Jacob? Here. Alderman Messina? Here. Alderman Sesmarski? Here. Alderman Woods? Here. All right. Up first, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from August 11th, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Next up, report and recommendation and approval of, approval of proposal from Jensen's Plumbing and Heating for the City Hall Emergency HVAC Replacement Project in an amount not to exceed $42,850. That would be my motion. Second. Questions? Yep. Well, Alderman Smarski? Yeah, Jeff, is this a, a final or is there still more work to be done on the HVAC system? Yeah. Director? Uh, this is uh, to replace the two existing rooftop units. Um, as it stands, this is the only work that we have planned. However, there are air handlers up there and other components that may come up for replacement in the next couple of years, but at this time, this is the only planned work. I mean, we've got a bigger Go follow we do have a bigger plan in place for more, more work to be done for it. We are, uh, this was found during our routine preventive maintenance inspection. Um, we don't have any current replacement schedule for all of our rooftop units throughout the city, but it is something that we're working towards. Okay, Alderman Woods. Yeah, so is this two units that stopped working or the potential is they're on their last leg? So the two units were found to both have cracked heat exchangers, and given the age of the units, that they're okay. 13 years old and they don't have, uh, it made more sense to replace rather than repair. Great. Uh, Mayor? Peter was first. Okay. Go ahead. Alderman Jacob. Uh, on this, these air conditioner units, I mean, on the list of bills, we're constantly fixing these things. Did our maintenance person that handles that or contractor not notice the heat. I mean, the heat exchanger just doesn't crack overnight. I mean, we seem Director. like we have people out there all the time. So we do have an agreement in place uh, with a contractor to perform routine inspections. I believe it's quarterly. And this uh, was discovered during that routine inspection. So it was the result of their, uh, our agreement with them that this was discovered. Okay. Follow up? No, thank you. Mayor? So, we redid the ones in the police department, and when we sat here, they told us, you know, we got two units instead of we got three or whatever, and that that unit was able to be expanded, but we're not able to connect these two anymore from one side of the building to the other. Director. So my understanding is that City Hall and, and Police Station operate as two separate buildings as far as an HVAC standpoint. So these two units only serve the City Hall portion and Police Department is covered by separate units. And I don't know if they all have the capacity to, uh, to cover the rest of the, the building. A follow up? Yeah, I thought, I think I asked, so we can expand this when we have to do the rest of the building and whatnot. The answer was yes. I thought, but I could be wrong. Expand the tying in the, yeah. those units to this system. Yeah, because remember, yeah. there was they said that one unit can actually handle it, but the second unit, you have know, got a backup, back. and I think even Art said it, it might be a little overkill. But it's, it's something we can look into. We can I, contact I like uh, the contractor who we can um, expand that system. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm just curious. Is that not even an option? So, uh, Mary. Okay. I was just going to say, I don't think it's an option. You'd have to get from the police department through the vestibule we'll area to yeah. City Hall with, with to push work them. to yeah. push the air over here and tie in. And that velocity, that would, that would take a lot of pressure to get over yeah. to this, right, Mr. Builder? Yes, correct. Yeah, I'm not sure if your question was at the time if the units now could handle the police department after its uh, remodeling project that's coming up. 
or if it could expand to the city hall, as Alderman Wood says, I don't think that it could, but it's something we could look into. So my understanding was the units for that area of the police department were oversized for a reason, but oversized for that area, not in an effort to cover an expanded area. That right? is my understanding as well. Okay. Do you have a follow? -up? Yeah, no, I, my thing is I thought we could just expand on those units. Meaning add units tied yeah, into that I, system? Right, but I guess not. So can we tie in additional, not so much? It doesn't sound like it. I don't believe so, no. Okay, so it's a totally separate unit. We couldn't tie into the controls? Correct. Okay. Alderman Smarsky? Yeah, I don't want to get too far off topic, but we did. Didn't we not have the gentleman here for the whole air unit system for the blue station? We did. Yeah, but I, I don't recall the conversation about it being no. joint systems. I, I remember him coming out. There was talk, police, city hall has always been separate. We've always had um, issues with one side of the building versus the other. It's never I, been I, I, I recall, I never recalled them saying it was one unit with expanded coverage. I do yeah. recall what the mayor is saying that we would, you'd be able to add units, kind of like set up one alarm system and then keep adding cameras as you see fit and it's all under one, one platform. That, I, so I recall that. Um, right. Me yeah. Yeah, please go ahead. Because I said this is basically like a refrigeration rack system. One goes down, the other ones are working. You can add, subtract, you know, add to the system or not. So I just assumed that maybe I should have been more specific on my question. Hmm. Even, well, yeah, but regardless, it sounds like yeah, we can, okay. even if you wanted to add, you're only going to be covering the police department Correct. area. Correct. So. Right. The duck work will not support it or ever support it. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Names? Yes. Alderman Calano? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Sesmarski? Yes. Alderman Woods? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that passes. Just wondering what the cost of snow of suits would be compared to the 42000 <laughs> <laughs> Next up, an approval of an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Superior Road Striping, Inc. for the 2022 pavement marking program in an amount not to exceed $29,365. That would be my motion. Second. Any questions? Okay, roll call, please. Right, yeah, no sure. question, Alderman Jacob. Yeah, sorry. Um, did we get any other? I, I know we. This was kind of through uh, a company that, or whatever consortium that gets bids. But did we just for the heck of it get a couple quotes just to make sure, kind of check them on that? We'll typically compare it to other joint bids that have been out or pricing from last year to make sure that it's on par. Okay. Thank you. Roll call, please. Alderman Ames? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curiali? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. And that passes. Next up, an approval of, of an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Corrective Asphalt Materials for pavement preventative maintenance in an amount not to exceed $32,883. Motion. Oh, I didn't make the motion. I'm sorry. Okay. And we have a second. Any questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Ames. Yes. Alderman Catalano. Yes. Alderman Curielli. Yes. Alderman Jacob. Yes. Alderman Messina. Yes. Alderman Sosmarski. Yes. Alderman Woods. Yes. And that passes. And the next. Up is an approval of an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Globe Construction, Inc. for the fiscal year 2023 sidewalk replacement program in an amount not to exceed $49,992. That would be my motion. Second. Any questions? Alderman Catalano? Yeah, what, what do we do with the, um, the sink and 
sidewalks. I mean, these sidewalks are, they're not damaged, but they're starting to sink down. And they cause ponding, you know, and especially in the, in the wintertime, you know, they ice up. Is it, uh, do we, can we get a, find out how much it would cost to, I guess, uh, mud jacking or polyurethane foam or? Would it be yeah, typically if, uh, if it meets a certain parameter, like a quarter inch or more of deflection, we'll just replace it. Okay. We found that to be more cost effective than mud jacking, but we have done mud jacking under certain instances in the past as well. Okay. So can we go around and, and um, you know, pretty much look at those and see? We do a, a yearly survey. Okay. Um, if there's a particular area that you're concerned with, feel free to send it our way and we'll okay. go on and inspect. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? All them, Jacob? Yeah, and I'm, I'm, uh, I thought some of the addresses on there were for Arbor Lane. Is that not correct? Some of those sidewalk replacements? Director. I am looking at the list. I'm trying to find my list and I. I do see two squares on Arbor Lane. I'm sorry, several on Arbor Lane. Yeah. No. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, Arbor Lane, I mean, isn't that a relatively new, I mean, that subdivision hasn't been there. I mean, I just drove by, drove by there and I mean, I really didn't see, I could point out sidewalks in worse condition than those are. They still look relatively new over there. As I said, we do a, a survey each year, and if it meets certain criteria, such as deflection or cracking or spalling, then we mark it for replacement. I can take a, a little closer look at these on Arbor Lane specifically and see what the issue was with them. And again, if you're aware of any other sidewalk areas that uh, you think need our attention, feel free to send those our way. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, follow up? Yeah, I, I, I don't have any particular in mind, but I just drove by Arbor Lane, and I, I mean, they look still pretty new when the subdivision is what 10 years old possibly About 10, yeah. so i really can't see the sidewalks already deteriorating already yeah i mean depending on condition uh of the subgrade and the quality of the concrete materials laid i mean it, everything deteriorates at different pace but i can certainly take a look at it okay thank you uh all the names thank you so yep. when are when is the schedule to start is this for this fall the sidewalk program Yes, shortly after a formal award by council, uh, after, or it'll have to be the October 6th meeting. Okay, thank you. Right. Any other questions? Right. Roll call, please. Alderman Ames? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Sosmarski? Yes. Alderman Woods. Yes. And that passes. Items to be considered at future meetings. One, fuel tank replacement on September 22nd. And two, city sign program on September 22nd. Uh, do I have a motion to I'll make the motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And we are adjourned. Okay, I'd like to call the planning, zoning, and building committee to order, but I'm going to take her. I'll uh, reflect the same members are present. Uh, first, I'll entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from July 14th. Second. Oh, you made it, sir. No, you made the motion, you made the oh. second, so we're good. Uh, any questions, corrections, changes? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Next, report and recommendation, rental housing program, residential rental property. Stacy. Thank you, Alderman Woods. So before I explain what the item is, I do want to um, review briefly the item that I handed out before, um, to you before the meeting started. So um, there was a black lined um, copy of the proposed changes to the text included in the packet for this evening. Um, it wasn't the, due to a mix up, it wasn't the most current. So um, some of the minor changes um, at the last minute from the attorney were not included. So what I did is I went through and highlighted them. They're not significant, but I'm happy to answer any questions. So anything in yellow in what I handed out to you is um, something that wasn't included in, that was a change that wasn't included in the materials re you received in the packet. And so basically, um, just to summarize what those yellow changes were, um, we're eliminating the term Airbnb. Um, first of all, it's not necessary um, because it, 
an Airbnb is basically a short-term rental, and short-term rental is language that is still in the code. Um, also, it's a company name, and it's not a use. So it's like, you know, instead of calling tissue tissue, you call tissue Kleenex. So we really don't want to have a company or a brand name um, in the code. Also, um, most of the changes are capitalizing the word official in code official. Um, the one other change was defining the code official as the community development director. Previously, it said the code official was the development administrator, which really is the community development director as defined in the UDO. However, um, it there, there doesn't make any sense to have it called something else, um, you know, in between. So we just changed it to community development director. Um, and those are basically the changes that were added in yellow. But of course, um, I can answer any questions that you have. In summary, this item um, was in the works before I came. And um, what the intent is, is to revise the text of the rental residential or res residential rental um, code section um, to really reflect the way we've been conducting inspections, which has been by six different districts. Um, it's also to change the application and payment deadline to match those six districts. So right now what's happening is um, the inspections, like I said, were set by the six zones, but applicants had to apply by December 30, 31st of the prior year. So we would get all 900 applications, um, December, well, conceivably, if everybody actually paid on time, we'd get them all by December 31st of the prior year, and we'd do the inspection sometime the next year, six, eight, maybe even 10 months later. Um, and uh, however, we are inspecting them by zone, and actually all of the 900 or so applicants in the program, they know what their zone is, because we've been doing that for about five to six years. So they know what zone number they are, they know what couple of months it is. This is really just a line in the payment to match the inspection schedule. Um, from you know the staff's perspective, from the administration of the program, um, the changes will be more practical for us. Um, usually people around the end of the year during the holidays are losing track of things like paying for a residential res um, rental application. Um, and now that'll be more closely linked to when their inspection occurs, so that will make sense to them. It also mirrors the exact same way we're handling the commercial occupancy program, or the certi commercial occupancy certificate. We do the same exact thing. Six zones, six payment um, cycles. And um, it basically just formalizes the current inspe um, inspection schedule into the city code. So basically, we're just aligning it with what we're already doing and um, matching it to the COC process. And I'm happy to answer any questions. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I was going to ask, and you said, was that on page, now that you gave us a sheet of paper, I need to make sure my question's still relevant. But on, um, page 118 of the packet um, all these changes are I mean are the all the people that rent their units are they going to be notified of all these changes yes um, so this is the a really good time for us to be making this change because we'll be able to give people notice um, within the next couple of weeks about this change um, like I said they they already know when their inspection will be but they'll get their bill later in the year if, if their inspection time is later in the year. So we'll be able to send something out within the next couple of weeks so they know that they don't have to pay by December 31st, unless of course their um, zone is the first of the month, which is January, February, then they it's due January 1st. But we'll get word out to everyone um, in advance. Alderman Messina. More of a logistics question that I was just thinking about. Logistically, like, someone put a unit up for sale in February, they pay the full amount and then pay a full amount again? So um, as a rule of thumb, let's say you come in in July and you're a new, um, a new renter or a property owner who wants to rent, you'll pay the fee and let's say your, but your property is located in zone one, you're gonna get re your, your inspection and your payment will also be due in zone one. As we get towards the end of the year, it really doesn't make any sense in November or December to have someone pay and then they're gonna pay again in, you know, 
a few months later. So um, generally at those times, we just combine the fee and, and um, they've paid for their next cycle. Jacob? Yeah, on um, uh, 6.1604, um, on B, it talks about unlawful for a person to occupy a rental residential property. Um, in, does, is there somewhere that covers people renting rooms in a home? Is that included in here somewhere? So I would have to, I have the original code. Hold on one second. The, if you're going to rent um, out a unit, then you have to comply with the residential rental code. If you're going to rent, rent for th less than 30 days, you're, you not only have to get the rental registration, but you also have to get a special use. Those are the short-term rental, like a, um, Airbnb type. But um, you're asking if they rent a bedroom? Well, like I'm saying, if I had a five bedroom house and I'm going to rent four bedrooms out or five bedrooms out, how, how does, do, do you have to have, is that considered a rental property or what is that considered? Or is that um, more? So this basically says um, an entire structure. Um, so the way rental residential property is defined in the code is residential structures or individually titled dwelling units, not rooms for let, um, that are let or intended to be let for rent or lease, including single family detached structures and structures being used for short term rentals. Um, that is what a rental residential property is. So if you let a room or four of your five rooms that doesn't um, necessarily get triggered here, but I'm sure we would hear about it from an overcrowding <laughs> perspective. Okay. Alderman um, Yeah, just uh, I just had a few questions through here. Packet page 123, and like I said, let me just make sure it's still relevant. I had Airbnbs, but I thought we didn't allow Airbnbs. Um, so they are allowed, but only with a special use permit. So they'd have to go to CDC, have a public hearing, and then get approval from the city council. And, and Airbnb type short term rentals are defined as 30, um, they'll lease it for 30 or less days, or it's actually less than 30. 30 and above is not um, a short term rental. Okay. And then there was a section in here. Um, where it said that we we could make the determination that uh, I guess I'm just going to look on my packet versus in here. So packet page 123. Yeah, I, I again I took it from the computer here. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, page it's uh, section 6.1607. Registration, registration, suspension, and revocation. Um, in A, it says that uh, a registration may be suspended when any violation of applicable city codes has been identified by the community development. Uh, let's see. It, it says the registration may also be suspended when any information provided in the registration application is determined by the code official to be false. So that to me kind of seems like an overreach. Like could the code official could say, well, you're saying you have three people living here, but we know you have four, so we're not gonna approve this, or we're gonna revoke this. So that really would come into play if we got a complaint. When we get the applications in, we're not evaluating them for, you know, um, we're not, you know, checking whether they've, you know, the last name matches the last name on the deed or the warranty or, you know, the property. We're accepting that this is information that they're, you know, providing to us. But if we get a complaint and then find that they've falsified information in their application, that's when that would come into play and we would proceed with um, enforcement actions if necessary. And just one more question. Um, this is... 6.1612 violations. So it talks about uh, property failure to come uh, of the occupants of the rental residential property to vacate such property within 60 days. Now are these consistent with like state, I mean, when I heard it's really 
I don't own a rental property, but I heard it's really hard to get rid of a renter. So are these, you know, like the 60 days, could you get somebody out in 60 days or what happens, you know, on the code here, it's a, within 60 days. So the owner is going to be penalized if the renter doesn't move out. How does that work? So there's a lot of things that come into play there with that question. Okay. So first of all, um, you know, it, when the, the property owner assigns the agreement to be, a, you know, a, to rent property, they um, acknowledge that they've read to and agree to be bound by this section of the code. So they know they're the responsible party. And it's just like any other thing in the code. We have the authority or the ability to go after the property owner, not necessarily the tenant, unless, um, you know, some police matters, you can. But for zoning and, and this type of information, it's really the property owner. Um, if and there is a judicial process which is necessary to evict someone from a rental property and usually it takes um, much more than 60 days um, we understand that but as long as the, the property owner is working with us um, you know and is proceeding through that process um, we would work with them as well <clears throat> Alderman Smart. yes Stacy on the public safety board I have to ask this question, piggybacking on Alderman Jacobs' question. If we have to have an inspection on a home or renting out as a single family unit, why wouldn't we include people who are subletting a single, or uh, bedroom. like he says, a bedroom, mm -hmm. a bedroom to make sure that that resident is also safe? I mean, we don't, what happens if that happens and somebody finds a loophole and says something, well, the city didn't check that house. I think there's always loopholes. There's always loopholes, um, but our code doesn't. Have to close them. I mean, I, I yeah. don't know if there's an issue we can do or something that can be done. So our code doesn't address that right now. Um, obviously, the concern is if if this happens and it is over, you know, impacting the neighbors, we will hear about it, and we can go out and address it from. Um, the perspective of you know are, is there overcrowding are they meeting the code um, requirements for a number of people in a residence type of um, situation otherwise um, if you know it's like having a, a guest like your mother or grandmother comes you know for six months from another country right. but she's not paying rent true right but i guess i'm a all right sorry yeah go ahead but i guess i'm a piggybacking again on that you know, how many times do they inspect the furnaces for cracks in their heat or heat exchanger or anything? And like St. Peter said, you have one problem. I'm in the house by myself and I've got four bedrooms. I run out three of them. Do you have three strangers living there? So it depends on, you know, that's a policy decision for the council. It, it depends on how far you want to drill down. Um, obviously, those are things difficult for us to catch right. and enforce. Um, and I think that if it does come up, we have other ways to handle it. But if, if it's something the city council wants to change, we can certainly look into it. But I think we've got it covered. Yeah, PMI would handle that. It's a one-off from which would lead to you guys. Yeah. Alderman Messina, you have a question? Yeah. I mean, part of the occupancy we, we handle by the requirements for smoke and fire detectors that kind of help dictate some of that as well. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Okay. Yeah, there is a requirement for those um, that's required by the building code and the fire code. Yeah. And then Go ahead. is there like a rule of thumb on occupancy when you think about like, I know in some rentals I have in other towns, it's I know another state, it's like X number of people in each bedroom, which you have a four bedroom, then it's 10 is max occupancy or eight. Let's just say simple math, two per bedroom. Do we have that rule of thumb? Our code is really based on square footage. So okay. per each person, um, there needs to be this much square footage. There's additional information um, in there, I'm not, but I'm not sure. But it, it seems to be very effective in controlling overcrowding okay. the code. Thank you. Alderman Jacob. Yeah, and when, going back to like the violations, I mean, could we maybe put some, again, I don't want to see the landlord punished if, you know they're trying to get a tenant out they're going to be after 60 days i know you said we're going to work with them but i mean i'd like to see something in writing that the city will work with you as long as you know you're working to evict that tenant again the, the landlord shouldn't be punished if 
they can't get their tenant out. Yeah. Um, I can talk with uh, Attorney Bond about that. I mean, legally, our responsibility is for the property owner. Um, we can probably put some language in there, but we also don't want to open the door to allow people, not for property owners to feel that they really don't have to comply because they have an out and we've written it in. Um, but I can certainly ask him. Or, uh, police. So this goes back to like when we discussed the water, right? You're renting your property, your tenant isn't paying, the landlord's responsible, period. I know we had a big discussion on that. Yeah. But it's up to the landlord who's got skin in the game. No. It's not. I think we said no. <laughs> what do you mean? Absolutely not. I fought it all night long until we said no. With, that's when we increase the deposit on the water bill. And we just decrease. Yeah, but we can turn the water off. Yeah. Can we turn on, it off? On the tenant. On the tenant. Not force the landlord to pay the water bills for the tenant. Yeah, I, I know we had a big discussion. Yeah, no, we did have a big discussion. correct. We didn't, we didn't say the tenant. I didn't let Jeff go home until I had my way. That was a very long meeting. I remember that. Yes, right, and we're going down that same path here, but here's the. This is, a, this is a different it kind depends of who's signal. Registered, right? The city of Wooddale is registered who's paying the water bill. Correct. Right. Alderman Jacob. Just one final question. I know in Addison, my father has a rental property there, and they have this crime free. What is, is that something we could do? I, I, no, we can't. I don't really understand what that's exactly all about. Is there history? We're not there overall. On that? Oh. Yes, correct. There you go. Okay, thank you. So, if there's no other questions, then I'll, I'll start. So, a couple things as we, we talked about before, if we could change rental residential to residential rental in the 50, 60 places that it shows up, because that's the way it should read. Um, and I'll just, uh, a couple of the other things you cleared up with the, the copy you gave us uh, with the grammar things and capitalization and stuff like that. Uh, the big one, I want to go back to the, the liability being completely put on the, the landlord. Uh, and I agree, and I didn't call Peter, he came up with that on his own. So. Uh, other people are thinking of it, it's really unfair. We don't want to prolong somebody being in the building any longer than we have to, especially if they're not paying rent or not complying with the rules. If they're not complying with the city rules, they're probably not paying us rent either, or whoever the landlord is. Um, and in here, uh, when we were talking on the phone, Stacy, you said that the Wooddale doesn't enforce anything, but we actually do under section 6.1610, inspection access, say the city will go to circuit court for a search warrant uh, authorizing such inspections. So I think that this needs to be a, a, a conversation. Maybe we could get Pat, not tonight, on the phone, but to go through that to clean up some of that language. Because I would argue that this is your job. You created this. I pay you to do something. You say, in fact, you'll get a court order to go in to get them to comply. Why are you making me responsible for it? So whether I agree with how we do it or not, we, we need to clean up the language because it, it, it's open to interpretation that it could go either way. So that, that's my big one for tonight. The other ones I think uh, we'll clean up naturally with the stuff. So. There's no further questions. I'll make uh, a motion to approve as noted. Second. You know. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Next items to be considered at future meetings. Is there anything? Nobody's got anything they want to add. Next, I'll make a motion to adjourn. A second. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.